What up, everybody? It's Amir Rahimi here. And I'm Soren Baker. It's the Great Debaters. And today we're actually going to talk about Soren's acclaimed History of Gangster Rap book. Yes, make sure you all pick it up on Amazon, Barnes & Noble, or through IndieBound to hit the independent retailer near you if you haven't already. So, Soren. Yeah, man. How's it going, man? Everything is great. We just had a... Tremendous in-store at the Barnes & Noble at the Grove in Los Angeles. Dana Dane uh, hosted it and interviewed me for it. Big Les showed up, Henji from Rhyme Syndicate, George Hinojosa, my woman Davida, my daughter Lauren. Amir was there too. I was there front and center. Actually. Yes, man. So it was awesome, man. And we've been getting a lot of great feedback. I signed uh, autographs and it was just an amazing experience. Dana asked a lot of great questions and uh, Got all into the book, man, The History of Gangster Rap, in stores now. Oh, yeah. So, um, let's, uh, let's get right to it. What, right. I, I want to ask this one. Okay. What, what are some of the pet peeves that you have about people who bash gangster rap and think it has no meaning, it's just violence and, and all that stuff you always hear people say about it? I think that is the pet peeve, that people think it is just all about violence. Granted... Violence plays a big part in what is gangster rap, but I think that if you really look at a lot of gangster rap, some of it, of course, is sensationalistic, but a lot of it is very thoughtful and has a lot of information that if you actually pay attention to what the artists are saying, it's very powerful, very positive, very thought-provoking, and it also highlights some of the shortcomings that are you know, inherent in our society and sheds a light on them. And if that happens through violence and through the use of profanity and through the use of confrontation, through the use of discussing gang activity or the government, I don't think that discounts it as being any less powerful or any less artistic. And I think that gangster rap for, in particular and rap in general get a lot of you know, heat for that, but that doesn't mean that what the artists are doing isn't powerful or isn't valid and isn't, you know, some of the best art being created out there. There you go. I love it. I need to kind of like copy and paste that. Because <laughs> <laughs> I get a lot of people who ask me, oh, why don't you, why do you listen to that music? You know, blah, blah, what does it benefit? And I give them my own spinoff, which sounds good, but not quite as good. But, uh, okay, well, well, I want to know what's your favorite gangster rap dress code? Well, what's your favorite outfit or, uh, I don't know, who wore it best, you know? Well, I think if we have the defining image of gangster rap, I think that that's Easy e You know, he's got the Lopes, the Jerry Curl, the Raiders hat. Very mysterious to some people would view that as menacing. But to me, as I thought, imagined, and as gangster rap became more popular, you know, thanks in large part to N.W.A., mm -hmm. You know, that was kind of the defining look, and Easy e personified that. And in the book, The History of Gangster Rap, I talked to Glasses Malone about that, about how uh, Easy e was kind of the flagship or the the Jerry West NBA logo, if you will, of gangster rap. And e Easy e really defined that. So make sure, you know, when you do pick up the book, The History of Gangster Rap, Glasses Malone and I have a great... Uh, section of the book about that and I was glad to talk to Glasses about Easy e extensively because Glasses and I share an affinity for Easy e and I wanted to make sure that You know NWA rightfully so got a lot of acclaim for the Straight Outta Compton film and through its Induction into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, but of course Easy e passed away So with the history of gangster rap, I want to make sure that Easy e was well presented and his impact and influence and some of the things that don't get discussed as much because he's not around uh, aren't eliminated or admitted and I thought that that was something that was great and I was glad that Glasses Malone helped me articulate that so yeah. Nice well speaking of, of the book uh, do you have a favorite chapter in the book? Really man <laughs> no <I> gotcha. <laughs> because all the chapters I think are important which is why I included them and you know I just think it's important every phase of gangster rap and all the evolution of it is critical to where it is now and like most everything you know things build off of one one another and are influenced by one another so 
you know, if you don't have Rapper's Delight and you don't have the Breaks by Curtis Blow and you don't have the Message by Grandmaster Flash and Furious Five with Melly Mel, you might not have, you know, PSK by Schooly D. And then since Ice-T was inspired by PSK, we might not have Ice-T. And then these are all dominoes that fall throughout the history of rap. So I just wanted to make sure to present every chapter and to do it you know, it's the best that I could, so I think they're all my favorite, or they're all the best. I think the right answer was when Death Certificate was brought up in the book. <laughs> well, so that's the 1991 the, chapter. Yeah, that's the <laughs> chapter that focuses on 1991, which is probably the most uh, explosive year in gangster rap in a lot of ways, and I go into a lot of detail with that, just with the albums that were released that year, Death Certificate among them with the films that were released that year and the history that NWA made on SoundScan. So that chapter in particular, I think a lot of people will find interesting because the fact that all this happened in 1991 and the fact that it happened before The Chronic is remarkable. Gotcha, yeah. Well, um, let, let's, see, let's see this one. Um, have you ever been scared as a listener from some of the lyrics or frightened or maybe even threatened by some lyrics they heard in gangster rap, and if so, which artist did that most? I think the ones that scared me the most are the Ghetto Boys, uh, because especially on the Grip It On That Other Level and the Ghetto Boys self-titled mm -hmm. album, those two in particular I thought were extremely gruesome, extremely well done, and I was also pretty young at the time, so I'd never heard any songs like that even with all the gangster rap and all the violent stuff I'd seen or heard to that point, I just thought that their stuff, as they said, took it to the next level of the game. And I just was like, man, these guys, you know, are amazing. And they might be crazy, mind of a lunatic. So that, yeah. that really, um, it intrigued me and it scared me, but it also made me really appreciate the Ghetto Boys and I have a chapter that largely focuses on Scarface and the Ghetto Boys and also by default as an extension of that rap a lot records and their significance. You know, I talk about CJ Mack in that chapter being, even though he's from Los Angeles, being on rap a lot. And I talk about a lot of the other significant things that Jay Prince and the label did that made it such a, a powerhouse and so important to gangster rap especially being from Houston and not Los Angeles area. Gotcha. Well, um, I see on the on the title of the book, it says uh, from School E.D. to Kendrick Lamar, so basically the first um, gangster rap song ever with PSK, right. um, and up to currently Kendrick Lamar. What would you say to people who don't credit Kendrick Lamar as a gangster rapper? Well, I go into detail about Kendrick Lamar and is he or is he not a gangster rapper in the book, The History of Gangster Rap? Because some people think he is a gangster rap, some people don't think he's a gangster rap, and I think the best way to evaluate his actual status, whether he is or is not, is how do you evaluate other artists? Ice Cube was never a writer saying, oh, you know, I'm from this neighborhood, I'm repping this gang, this set, whatever. Ice Cube told the stories from the environment and I think Kendrick Lamar is the evolution of that. Kendrick Lamar is not out there you know super gang banging saying I'm repping my hood and my set and doing all that kind of stuff like other rappers do but like Ice Cube, Kendrick Lamar especially with Good Kid Mad City and earlier in his career I would say way more prevalently talked about you know societal stuff with the you know Reaganomics trickling in with violence and and the different things that impact people that live in, in Southern California and how gangs impact that. So, you know, Ice Cube may have been wearing rags and may have been this and that and may have grown up in the neighborhood he did, but he also wasn't super gangbanging with his lyrics like other yeah. people do. And Kendrick Lamar certainly reps his neighborhood and if you watch his videos and the colors they use, I'm sure you can figure out what's yeah. going on. So. You know, Kendrick Lamar, I could see the argument from both sides, but I thought it was important because of his prominence and also because of the popularity of TEE, the fact they do have Schoolboy Q and J-Rock, who, unlike Kendrick, you know, go there. Yeah. You know, I thought it was important to show 
you know, he's kind of this evolution of gangster rap and he's clearly one of the most respected and popular artists today. So, and he's from Compton. So there's so many reasons that he's important to discuss and debate and to have people talk about in the book, The History of Gangster Rap. Um, well, do you think there is a, a best gangster rap album or the maybe the most essential gangster rap album? I know for song, I know what you'd probably say, but um, for album, As far as an album, I would really have to say, if you want to do it chronologically, the self-titled debut album by Schooly D, just because mm -hmm. it launches the whole movement, and that came out in 85, it's called Schooly D, it's on Schooly D Records, it has PSK and Gucci Time, and he was doing stuff that was never done before on that, that album. And then if you want to look at artistically the best album, I would most likely, you know, I would say Death Certificate by Ice Cube, just because even outside of gangster rap, if it's not the best rap album ever, it's definitely in the discussion of the top five, if not much higher than that. And that's definitely a gangster rap album where you have gang activity being discussed, dissected, and described the pros and cons of it you know he's looking at all sides of it with us he's looking at the spread of it with my summer vacation he's looking at the medical system failing especially blacks in Los Angeles at the time with the live on arrival he's got black Korea dealing with the way uh, blacks were dealt with by Korean owned stores in Los Angeles so it's not just gang banging it's looking at things from a perspective that is well-rounded and shows some of the ills of society and how what happens in America, you know, by the, the system that we have trickles down to these individual people. And, you know, that's an amazing album, of course. So, Okay, so we got two. Thank you for that. Well, um, I know, obviously, this is a very... You know, long book. It's got 200 plus pages, but almost I wanted 300, to know yeah. almost 300. Boom. I wanted to know uh, since it was you know pretty filled. Was there anyone in there that you wish you could have gotten for an interview, or you thought that if you had a little bit more time, you could have, or maybe someone from the past who's not here with us anymore? Yeah, absolutely. Easy E. Um, there it is. Easy E. I never got to meet him. I never got to interview him. By the time I started writing. You know, he, you know, was at the end of his life, actually. So, you know, people have to understand when I started writing, being a teenager and all this stuff, I wasn't, when I first started writing, getting access to people like Easy e and Tupac and, you know, the A-list people. So I had to work my way up just like you do as an artist. I had to do the same thing. So I never got to meet him or interview him, but his publicist, Phyllis Pollock, she knew how much I loved and respected Easy e and she actually gave me something that he wrote and had given to her uh, just so I could have it from my archives, which was amazing. So thank you for that, Phyllis. She definitely helped me out with that. But I always think that Easy e is one of the most important and underappreciated and unreported, supported, and endorsed people in the history of rap, the history of gangster rap, and the history of rap business. And for all of those reasons, I, I wish I could have got to talk to him, but that's why he's in the history of gangster rap quite a bit, because his achievements resonate to today. And when you think about it, what executive in rap history has signed you know, people as important as Ice Cube, Dr. Dre, and Bone Thugs and Harmony, as well as himself? That's a tall list, and who, who could, you know, it's hard to argue with that. And Easy E did it. He did well. And the Black Eyed Peas. Look it up for the Apple. And, and we can and we can even go more and more and more. And yeah, I mean, that's just MC like Ren, DOC. Oh God, above the law. Yeah, I mean, there's the Ruthless Records stamp in the game is tremendous, and I go into a lot of detail on that in the book. So I'm hoping that the people that read the book and check it out understand maybe more than they realized how important. Easy E's moves were both musically and as a businessman, and that's why I made a point to include a lot of that in the history of gangster rap. Well, thank you, man. I got all the questions that I had to ask, and cool, uh, cool. 
There it is. Everyone, yeah. make sure to pick up the history of Gangster Rap by Soren Baker. I also have a couple contributions in there as well, and I'm I'm stoked to be a part of this major book right here. Yeah, man. Well, thank you, and thanks for making the book a success. It hit number one of new releases on Amazon's chart for music criticism, uh, music history and criticism. So that was like real exciting. So I'm trying to get it to number one on a few other charts. So please continue supporting it. Thank you for everyone. Hit me up with any questions in the comments section. Be sure to share this, like, subscribe to Unique Access, and the Rapping and Snacking. And I'm Soren Baker, author of The History of Gangsta Rap. I'm Amir Rahimi. And check us out, y'all. Unique Access, Rapping and Snacking. In the beginning, hip-hop was ruled by the East Coast. Then the West Coast rose to prominence, thanks to gangsta rap. Hip-hop changed the world. Gangsta rap changed the narrative. I'm representing for the gangsters all across the world. And then changed the world again. Cause I'll come and take your life away. The history of gangsta rap features unheard stories, unseen photos and documents, all with exclusive interviews from the founders and players who shape gangsta rap. I think a real gangster rapper has to scare you a little bit. The history of gangster rap written by veteran rap journalist Soren Baker. In stores October 2nd, 2018. Yo, what up? This is DJ Quick. Be sure to pick up my homeboy Soren Baker's book, The History of Gangster Rap, if you really want to know what we do.